guys, are we all set? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Michelle, you might want to mention that we have a guest. Yes, I was going to. So, um, hi, good afternoon. My name is Michelle Valadares, and I would like to, first of all, welcome family and friends who are here. Thank you for being part of this journey. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to my peers because some of you could have easily stayed home today, but you're here supporting one another, so thank you for that. And I would like to give a shout out uh, and say thank you to those who are watching online right now. This is uh, friends and family, I consider them family, um, from the organization where I was working in California. So, thank you. Um, okay, so here we go. I will be talking to you today about my undergraduate research that I've been doing in the past year. Lisa has been helping me out with this, and I'll be talking to you today about support groups for burn injuries. So actually before we get there, I would like to invite you to go on a uh, imagery of uh, a possible scenario that could happen. I actually want to take you back to the fourth or fifth grade. So you're in fourth and fifth grade, in this moment, uh, school is great, family, friends, everything is great, and your family decides to go on a road trip that summer. Totally have an amazing time, but on the way back, that's when things change. On the way back home, a drunk driver hits your car, and immediately your car is engulfed in flames. In that moment, you take off your seatbelt and you open the door, and you look beside you to your six-year-old brother, who is in shock. So you take off his seatbelt and you tell him the only thing that you can do in that moment, run. Let's fast forward a little bit. You wake up to realize that you're not home. You wake up to realize that you're in a hospital. And now, you're confronted with things that you never, even in your wildest imagination, would have thought of. You're confronted with surgeries, with skin grafts, with painful dressing changes, with amputations, things that you would have never even thought of ever in your life. Fast forwarding a little bit more. About four months later, you are able to go home. But this reality is not what you had before. Now you come home wearing almost 24 hours a day pressure garments and a plastic face mask that you wear almost 24 hours a day so that your scars will not raise and you will not have to suffer those consequences later. Physical therapy and many other things, but your life is not the same. Can I share with you that that is the experience of many burn survivors in their life? that maybe the part of the accident was different because that was the story of my family and I more than 10 years ago. But the whole other piece of it is something that affects a lot of people. So this kind of brings me to the purpose of my study. Shortly after that, after, after our accident, um, we came back home and I was invited to what seemed like a support group. So we went to, I went to it and to be honest, when I went, it was about two people and it really wasn't anything uh, that I took away, something meaningful. And it made me think, there are no support groups here in London, Ontario. And as most of you know, I was in California last year working uh, with a nonprofit who helps burn survivors. And that's really where I got a glimpse of what support groups were like. And it made me start to think, what makes this support group so successful? So in talking with Lisa, we kind of came to the purpose of my study, which was understanding the effects of attending a support group for burn survivors and their families. Going into the literature a little bit, um, I do not necessarily just, not just look at burn injuries, but I started with looking at trauma as a whole. And I think in similar um, presentations, that's kind of something that affects a lot of people. Perhaps when we think of trauma, we might think uh, in a large scale, maybe for my generation, we think of 9-11. That's a, a, something that happened, and many people to this day actually still deal with post-traumatic stress. But we can think of many other things. For example, um, a family who has immigrated from one country to another. This can cause a lot of stress on people from one culture to another. It's something new, it's, it's definitely something that can cause stress. Or even a uh, divorce, for example. Maybe you know somebody or you personally experienced it that going from being one nucleus and splitting into two can have some sort of stressful uh, repercussions. So, as I said before, um, burn injuries typically do have a long rehabil rehabilitation time. And support groups provide a cost-effective way um, to help people cope with trauma. Also, looking at the study by Holiday and McPherson, this looked at um, a parent support group that had children with different disabilities, and they actually stated that they preferred to have a group specific to the parents because they felt like it was a safe environment where they could share and be open and express their feelings. And in addition, I think this is a really important piece. By learning more about support groups, we can actually help educational organizations and nonprofit organizations, and particularly in, in my study, medical organizations to provide and promote these kinds of programs. 
So now getting into my research in the past eight months, I did a modified interpretive grounded theory study. And I know that's kind of a mouthful, but basically what that means is, as we've talked about before, grounded uh, theory study looks at a specific phenomenon or a culture. And instead of going into it with a the theory, you actually are meant to observe and just kind of uh, indulge that culture or phenomenon and from there create the theory. So mine was modified because of the shorter time frame. This grounded theory typically could take many years. And it, it was interpreted because I took the stories from different people and then I created my own theory. So my research conducted uh, consisted of six semi-structured interviews with five open-ended questions and these were my participants child birth survivors, uh, siblings, and grand grandparents and parents who were part of the support group. And like I said before, this uh, research looked at the specific multi-layered support group in Southern California. So just to give you guys kind of an idea about the breakdown, uh, this is where they would start. They would split off into different groups, so for the parents or grandparents together, siblings, child birth survivors, if possible, they would split into different ages depending on numbers. And then lastly, they would go and uh, spend time together and share a meal and have that sense of community. So after doing my uh, six interviews, I came uh, to do the process as many as you did. We did the interviews, then we uh, did the transcripts, then we coded, and we've had our general themes that popped out. And so uh, my findings were that all participants had a positive experience from it. And the themes that really uh, came out throughout all of it was mutual support, feeling encouraged and empowered, feeling a sense of belonging, and resilience. And I just wanted to share with you this quote from uh, Veronica, one of the participants, where she says, she now knows she has a story. And can I share with you that when Veronica is talking about she, Veronica is talking about her four-year-old daughter who has a brain injury, but at four years of age, through the support group, was able to understand that her injury is not to hinder her, or to stop her, but to help her, but to be part of her. So for me, I just felt like I really need to share that with you guys. So breaking it down a little bit more, this was part of the interviews, uh, things that were said, and we take these things, we you know, and we transcribe them and code them into themes, and as I said, these were the themes that popped out, and speaking with Lisa and Selene, we actually were talking about how resilience is part of the uh, themes, but it was almost as if this theme was one of the main themes and these others were as if they were sub-themes because when you think about it, you really can't have a strong sense of resilience without some form of these qualities. And in that same way around, you can't have um, a strong sense of resilience without some form or aspect of these kinds of qualities. So it's just kind of to give a breakdown. Uh, in addition, something that all the participants said was that the environment was a huge factor. They said that they were so grateful for the facilitators who were able to just be there, who were supportive, and who were able to share resources with families. And also, they gave a huge shout out to the organization um, for supporting them and just being so willing to be there for them. They specifically stated, uh, one of the participants said that in comparison to his home country, he would never have this kind of help or resources at all. Just to kind of give you an example, um, in this organization, they help people with gas carts to be able to arrive. And in some instances, they give transportation so that people are able to make it to the meetings. Um, they give bi-weekly phone calls to see how families are doing and to remind them of the group. And uh, they provide snacks and a meal so that people don't have to worry about feeding their family. They get focused on just being there in the group and spending that time that they really need. So to conclude, as I said, all the participants had a positive experience from it. They said that it's helped them to cope with their trauma and to ultimately build resilience. One of the participants shared that he actually coaches a sports team and says that the tools that he has taken from the support group, he has been able to use them with other people who are part of the sports team. Uh, he says that with children and, and young people, they experience things such as family issues, such as divorce such as bullying. And he said that these tools that he's taken from there have helped him to be a light to somebody else who needs it, which is amazing. And so then ultimately, this, bring, this brings me back to the beginning of the presentation. And I think about my own personal experience and I say, if there's such a great program for uh, people who have burn injuries in California, why can't we do something like that here for Southern Ontario? 
kind of looking at um, different resources, I saw that there were at least six burn units in southern Ontario. And hypothetically to say that, if at least one or two people went through this uh, burn unit, there would likely be enough people for a support group. So not only just for burns, but this also makes me think of the bigger perspective. And as some of um, my peers have said about their presentations of trauma, of um, vulnerability, and all these things, imagine if we could be part of the change to bring people positive self-esteem, to bring people the resilience that they need. If you knew that you had the power to do that, wouldn't you want, you, wouldn't you want to be part of that change? Be part of that? I think that's what has inspired me to do uh, this research and has gotten me to work on. So, thank you. I don't know if anyone has any questions, but I did want to take a second to do my acknowledgements. I don't know if I'm sure. okay on time. Uh, first of all, I wanted to give the glory to God because without him, my story could have easily ended that day. But he decided to let my story continue, and it's been a purpose. So, glory to him. Um, thank you, Lisa, for being so flexible, <laughs> for being there for the, you know, this whole process to encourage me and so that I could do it. Thank you to the families who participated and shared their hearts with me, and to the Children's Burn Foundation for supporting me. T, thank you, because I've told you many times, um, more than three years ago, thank you for taking that chance on me without even knowing me. You believed in me, and I'm thankful for that. And obviously, to my family, thank you guys so much, because as I've said, since day one, you were there on that hospital bed when you had no idea what was going to happen to your children. You were there. And as I shared before, there were many times when I didn't want to walk anymore, because it hurt. It hurt so much, and you guys pushed me and you encouraged me, because you knew I could do it. And here we are, guys. Oh. <laughs> we checked this one off the list, because you guys pushed me and encouraged me, and you believed that I could do it. So thank you guys so much. <laughs>